Going to brick first. Are you excited? One, two, three, are you ready? This challenge goes to the cross, cross country track over there. That's you. Come on down. Do you want to bring your prize up? I can show you once you build. Want to bring your prize up? I can show you once you build. All right. You can see the um, people right there running through the finishing line. There's a timer right there to keep track of their time. It's a very creative cross country track. Now, what's your name? Elias. Elias. Give Elias a hand, folks. Okay. Here's your prize.
are here today with Jonathan Lopes, and this is his wonderful, wonderful artwork that he's got going on here at Brickverse. Uh, he's standing in front of a piece right now that he's going to talk a little bit more about. It's one of his, uh, his pieces that he's got a lot more pride into. What exactly is this piece, Jonathan? Is the piece, the piece is, um, this is actually Grand Central Terminal in New York City. Um, and it's one of my more recent pieces. I completed this in um, June of 2017. Wow. Um, okay. This is featured in my forthcoming book, New York City Brick by Brick. Um, and this is the cover piece. Um, wow. And it's one of my favorites. Yeah, um, this is the one that really drew my attention too when I came up. I mean, it just, it stands out. I got a lot of great pictures of it, took some video of it. Um, how many pieces are actually included in this? Um, this one has about 65,000 Lego pieces oh in it. Oh my goodness. And many of them are inside where you can't see them, like the infrastructure. Right. Um, because to, to make this stable and to have it be transportable, it's got to be pretty solid and pretty strong, as with all of my work. That makes total sense. Yeah, because so, I, I ship them from state to state. For I do a lot of exhibits throughout the year, um, and they need to be uh, very solid. Wow. Okay, so me and Jonathan were talking sort of off camera here a minute ago, and he's got a musical background, so he's also uh, got other creative outlets. And how did your creativity from music and all of that, how does that kind of weave its way into your creativity with this? Yeah, I consider myself an artist, and even before the music, I, you know, growing up, I would sketch. I worked a lot with pastels, blending colors. Um, so. By the time I was 12, you know, I had been a musician before that, but by the time I was 12, I really focused on being a musician. By the time I'm 14, 15, or 16, I'm, you know, playing gigs um, and, you know, playing in bands. Eventually, I joined, a, I'm from Boston. Eventually, I joined a band in New York City and moved down to New York City and uh, played music for a number of years down there. Um, and then in my mid 20s, you know, music really wasn't paying the bills. Um, right. We were good, but we weren't good enough, I guess. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so I had to get a, a career job, which I did. But then I still found that I needed a creative outlet. I needed my art to tap into my artistic voice a bit. Um, right. And that's when I bought a Lego kit. When the Lego company first got the Star Wars license, I bought a Lego kit and slowly over time after that I bought a few more and then I started posting photos of my own creations online and then slowly over the years it turned right. into this awesome unplanned the last four or five years have been plans but getting to this point has not um, so it's it's really rewarding and I'm grateful for where I am at this point right <laughs> We've got lots of lots of kids that are running around, and man, they are excited. And a lot of them, I noticed, are hovering around your area more. It seems like I think because there's more of that. It seems like with your artwork, you have a tendency to bring almost the unrealistic world of Lego into the realistic. Ooh. Whereas you know, whenever I was growing up, it was kind of like you had like a few kits here and there, and you built like these totally unrealistic. Lego type infrastructures right and then you come into this and you start seeing it and I mean there is so much detail in these which mm. I'll show I'll show some of these videos later and some of the pictures that I've got of these the intricacies and just the, the minute details of all this I was actually just talking with him about how each piece kind of needs to tell a story and you can just you can look at his artwork here you can look at his pieces and each one of them has like a story that it's telling and I think that's what's drawing the large majority of these these children is they're seeing like there's a viable outlet here for creativity yeah that's one thing i want to get across to them um is the fact that working with lego um is a viable source of income it is a viable job and i view it as any creative job you know it's like being a graphic designer you're designing book covers or magazine covers for right. example or you're an artist selling a piece of artwork for a book cover or a magazine cover, there's no reason that piece of art can't be a photograph of a Lego piece, right. you know? So my work has been on covers of magazines. Um, it's been on marketing pamphlets uh, for marketing companies, architectural firms. I've been commissioned and hired to build a skyscraper 
just so they could photograph it and use it on a magazine. Wow. There are so many different sources of revenue and income that you can tap into, but you just have to find them, you right. know, and you have to really think outside of the box. And you get to do something that you love at the same time. So that's, totally. yeah, that's it, really cool. It's definitely a hustle running a, a business and being an entrepreneur. Right. Um, you know, it's a lot, to me, it can be a lot more um, exhausting than a regular day job. But once I get, start doing it and I just get the energy in me, I'm, I'm just, I'm moving, you know, 24 seven and I love it. Awesome. So I have the mojo at this point in my life, so. <laughs> Okay, so now Jonathan is going to go a little bit more in depth, kind of point out some of his favorite parts of this piece, and uh, just kind of explain some of the the, uh, the inner workings of what went into why he did what he did. So, sure, yeah. One of my favorite features of Grand Central is actually a little girder underneath the roadbed, and we'll have to get down low. Okay. Um, but this girder here is actually one of my favorite pieces. I really enjoy exposing the undersides of the Lego pieces right. because I think they give a really good texture. Um, and this piece is, um, this girder is made out of the color sand green, which has a very limited number of parts available in this color. So I'm really happy with the, just the, the texture and the detail this little girder provides. Um, the windows are another aspect. Obviously, rendering the windows of the Grand Central Terminal was really, really important um, to get them accurate. And I think I did pretty well with it. Oh, yeah. And, that's and again, here I expose the undersides of the bricks to give a little grill like detail. Wow. Um, inside the top, I always include air conditioning units and I try to get. Um, use satellite views to get all the details like skylights on the roof as well. Um, while I was building Grand Central Terminal, I was already halfway through my piece before I discovered how intricate the roof was. And I was like, oh man, I, I thought I was halfway done and then I saw the roof and I was like, oh, I'm not nearly halfway done. I've got a lot more work to do. <laughs> the, the roof is a lot more elaborate than I had thought it was when I first started it. So it's great because, you know, you tackle a structure, you start building it, and then you learn more about it, right. which is really, really fulfilling. Pretty cool. So would you categorize yourself <laughs> as a perfectionist? Definitely not. No? <laughs> no. Absolutely not. There, there is um, a fine line where it's got to be good enough. Right. You know, you, you have schedule that I have to consider. I have to consider budget. There are a lot of mechanics that have to come into it, and I definitely do not consider myself a perfectionist. I call a lot, you know, back to my musical background, my, the imperfections in my work that I, only I know of, I call them soul. Right. You know, that's, back to the music. My, awesome. my work's got soul. A lot of imperfections. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Jonathan, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you going over this piece. I'm going to have lots of video and pictures of all of his pieces that are here today at Brickverse. Definitely need to check him out. Is there any place that they can go and see all of your work, maybe on an Instagram account? Yeah, like yep. Um, I have a website, jonathanlopes.com, and I'm also very active on Instagram. Jonathan Lopes Official is awesome. who I am on Instagram. Awesome. Thank you, Jonathan. We yeah, really thank appreciate you. your time, buddy. Yeah, thanks.